I'm going to share with you my really simple and really effective homemade dishwasher detergent tab. <laughs> We've been using these and we really like them and it's super simple so I thought I'd share it with all of you. It's so good you could eat it, yeah. but don't. <laughs> Ian and I have been trying to work on reducing the waste that we create. And one of the biggest ways that we've kind of come up with doing that is to do more things ourselves. The less stuff that we have to buy, the less packaging and, and garbage that goes along with it. And in the same way that cooking your own food out of like from scratch ingredients, significantly cuts down on the amount of garbage that you produce. We've also found that making some of our own cleaning supplies has really cut down on the garbage as well. I'm a little bit skeptical when I see some of the homemade cleaning recipes. I've already been the type of person to just use water or vinegar because I found that it worked really well, but I know I've seen all the nightmare horror stories about homemade laundry detergent <laughs> all over the internet. So when I first looked into the idea of doing my own dishwasher detergent, I wanted to do a little bit of research. I wanted to have some science behind my recipe. And that is how I picked this specific recipe. There's a lot of recipes out there that, you know, have a big list of ingredients and, you know, a ton of stuff going on, but everything in this recipe is there for a reason and it's simple, but it still works really well. The ingredients in this is just washing soda has to be washing soda specifically, not baking soda or like washing detergent. Um, the concept behind this ingredient is this changes the pH of the water inside of your dishwasher, which does the actual washing. Most uh, store-bought detergents have something like washing soda in it that's going to be a really effective pH changer. Uh, the dishwasher doesn't actually use soap to wash, it just uses heat and friction and the changing of the pH of the water. And so that's what this ingredient does. If you don't want to do anything and you have washing soda on hand, you can even just use this just straight as a dishwasher detergent and it works quite well. But we have really hard water here. So the other part of this recipe is citric acid. And what the citric acid does is it basically functions like salt to be a water softener. So the citric acid does react a little bit with the washing soda to make the washing soda less effective, but it also reacts with the water to soften the water. And having this, the citric acid inside the recipe makes it so we don't get streaks and things like that on our dishes when we're done. If we use just washing soda, we find after a couple loads of only washing soda, we start to get a film that builds up on our dishes. But when we use the citric acid in this recipe, it balances everything out. And if you're looking at a recipe and it has salt in it, it might have a lot of salt, whereas the citric acid you can just use a little bit to get the same amount of water softening. And so because of that, that makes it a little bit more economical and just easier to work with. You don't have to have so much bulk. And then the last ingredient is dishwashing detergent. And this is in no way <laughs> needed for this recipe. If you wanted to just make a powdered dishwashing detergent, you would just mix these together and then you'd be good to go. But because I'm making the tabs, the dishwashing detergent basically just works as like a binder and then it gives it a little bit of a scent and I find that it just, it ups the cleaning a little bit, but you do want to be careful because you're not supposed to be putting soap inside your, your dishwasher because it'll foam up. So this recipe has the amount, I've never had an issue with the, you know, the dishwasher washer getting sudsy, but we also have hard water where, you know, soap gets less sudsy anyways. But I feel confident that this recipe should be safe in most dishwashers. The other thing I really like about this recipe is it's really simple. The original recipe that I found called for one cup washing soda, half a cup citric acid, one tablespoon uh, dish soap. 
but that only makes about a week's worth of the dishwashing tabs for us and if I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna make this I'm gonna you know have the dishes I always triple it um, tripling it gives me a month's worth of dishwashing tabs so you know within a matter of like a handful like a half an hour I have my month's worth of dishwashing cleaning and if you wanted to you know I don't even know the numbers for getting that big but if you wanted to make a year's worth you could probably sit down and make a year's worth of these dishwashing tabs in you know no time so as I said I triple this recipe so that means I put in three cups of washing soda and one and a half cups of citric acid the numbers are two part washing soda one part one part citric acid and you know like if it's a little bit heaping or whatever it's it's not gonna wreck the recipe it's not crazy scientific before I add in the 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 washing soap I mix the things together I find that the citric acid and the washing soda kind of clump they do like a dry reaction that gets like big chunks you might be able to kind of see that in in the bowl um, but I like to break this up and mix it up together a little bit before I put in the soap because everything moves really quickly once I get to that point Now I've got them mixed together and I'm gonna add my my dishwashing soap. So as I said, uh, one cup, one cup washing soda, half cup citric acid, one tablespoon dish soap, and because I'm tripling this, that means three tablespoons of dish soap. When you put this in, it's gonna cause the mix to foam up a bunch. Um, don't worry. That that is what it's supposed to do okay so then you want to mix it all together and you want to do this as quick as possible and it can almost be hard to tell if everything's mixed together but it it really doesn't take much and if you know if there's a dry patch it doesn't really matter I usually mix it for let's say a minute okay so here we go foaming time yeah so basically it just turns into this like marshmallowy foam and you want to get that mixed in to the powder until it turns kind of into a dough it's kind of weird how it does it but don't worry that's what it's supposed to do as it thickens up it gets a little bit harder to stir so you might need to get your your lady muscles in there or your man muscles because men should make this too everyone should help it's all mixed now I find using the whisk makes it so it stirs all together easily at this point you want to work a little bit quickly if you can because the mixture will dry out and if it dries out then it just kind of gets crumbly and it's hard to form into the molds what I use to mold my tabs is you know it's after Christmas time and I was going through my recycling and I have, I have actually had these for a couple of years now but these were chocolate trays these had like turtles or something in them and I like them because they all stack together and they're they're a good size for the amount of dishwashing detergent that we like to use every time so I've been saving these up to use for this if you have like a silicone ice cube tray or a plastic ice cube tray um, you can use that too but one thing you do want to be careful of is they can absorb the smells so you know if, if you're using like a strong smelling dishwasher or uh, dish soap it can start to to scent your your you know ice cube trays and then your ice cubes are gonna be disgusting so you might want to consider that before before you use chocolate molds or something like that to make these and then I just pour it in I just kind of you know put the amount that it's mounding over how you know how big the mold section is because it's all super fluffy right now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press it so that it'll hold its shape 
thing. You can touch this with your hands too. It's it can you know make your skin a little bit dry, but it's not it's not like a crazy poison that's gonna make you sick or anything. Don't don't eat them. Washing soda is not not good to eat, but you know it's these aren't weird crazy chemicals that you have to be super paranoid when working with. So because all of mine are the same size, I can make this go a lot faster by just pressing them into each other. Because what you need to do is you need to press these down as much as you can because the amount of pressing that you do is what makes this mixture hold together. And the foaminess that it did in the bowl, it basically is going to want to continue to kind of foam up. Um, until they dry out so because of that you know like as as hard as you can get it on that first press the better and as I said there isn't much moisture in these so they actually start to dry pretty quickly like this stuff's probably malleable for like a half an hour to 45 minutes after um, just you know try to do this when you're not going to get interrupted because if you got to go and do something else you might come back and have it all just be dry and crumbly and you can still use it at that point you just have like a a scoopable mixture um, but you're not going to get the the convenient tabs that we like so much from this recipe the okay. tabs hold their shape really well too yeah i mean like here's one of the tabs and it's like you know like it doesn't want to break you can break it but it's, it's hard like chalk. You can see the under layer, like where I was just pressing that, the, they pressed them. But I usually go through, give one more press. With this mold, I find that, because as I said, these are just thin, cheap, like plastic chocolate molds. Um, I find that if I leave them in this mold, to dry overnight, it gets difficult to unmold them. So I unmold them onto a cookie sheet to then dry them overnight. But if you have, you know, something that is less flimsy, like a silicone mold or a hard plastic mold, then then just you can leave them at this point and then come back in 24 hours when they're dry to unmold them. But I I'm gonna do this. I have a cookie sheet. I use a cookie sheet just because then I can go and I can hide them for my kids so I don't wake up in the morning and smash these and make me sad. And also cookie sheet is metal so I don't have to worry about these stinking up like a wooden, wooden cutting board or something like that. But yeah at this point once once I've you know they're they're holding together fairly well but you need to let them dry like at this point they're just like they're super soft they're like gooey play-doh so if you if you weren't to put them to dry they just they crumble apart into nothing but they hold enough that I can gently push them around this is one thing that's good questionable. Ah, we're not fancy around here. If you leave them stacked on top of each other, they will stick together. So you want to try to lay them out like, you know, non-stacked. And then we wait and I will show you guys what they look like after they've dried overnight. You know what's great about this recipe? Cleanup is so easy because you literally have stuff that's just covered in dishwashing soap. So you just throw the stuff in the dishwasher. You don't even have to put soap in with it. Just... I, was, I was gonna say that whenever we're out of them, there's always one more worth of powder at the bottom. <laughs> so they. Yes, know. we save like so all these crumbs that are on the table. Like what I do is I sweep them onto the the cookie sheet. And then anything that crumbles off from these, we save into the bottom. It has been 24 hours, and so we're back to put these away because now they're completely dry. We keep them in this plastic container that seals up 
Um, you do want to put them somewhere where they're not going to be exposed to moisture or humidity at all because if they get wet then they start to you know have a chemical reaction and then they don't work as well and they fall apart. But you can see at this point they're okay Sam they're nice and hard. Oh. Okay you want to put it in? There. And I have some of them that have like stuck together a bit here. You want to see how strong mommy is? Is mommy strong? Yeah. <laughs> okay, are you strong too? Okay, karate chop it. Bah. Oh, bah. not as strong as mommy. Bah. Oh, still strong. <laughs> there you go, all done. Pretty easy. <laughs> As DIYs go, this one's fairly simple and fairly affordable to put together because you only need a couple different ingredients. As I said, we have been using this recipe for, you know, almost two years now and we've been really happy with it. It works really well. We found this to be an excellent way to, you know, reduce what we're buying at the store. We've been saving money, saving, saving garbage and you know having fun while doing it so give the recipe a try and let me know down below how it works out for you are these your blocks it's nice to have a recipe that you know what is in it so when your toddler decides to play with it you don't have to be overly paranoid which is definitely one of the perks of the homemade recipes you're making a mess. So it's all done. Ah, uh, that.